In this Quick Tips tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can expose Uscript variables to Unity and use them in different ways. Exposing variables in Uscript will allow you to do some powerful things such as share information across Uscript graphs and access variable values from Unity's inspector panel, even while the game is running. Here you can see we have a simple scene set up with an alter game object and a purple point light above it. When I play the game, you can see that I have some simple logic that tells the point light to turn on and off once per second. You can also see that I have some simple text on the screen that should be updating along with the light, but currently is not. Let's take a look in Uscript and see how things are set up right now. Here you can see we have the light control graph, which is controlling our light and turning it on and off. Connected to on update, we have a time gate, and this is where it changes from open to closed once per second, and we'll toggle every time it's open. We're toggling the magic light component, and then also we have, after the light is either turned on or off, we set a bool called light state to true or false. We'll talk about that more later. The first variable we might want to expose is the float variable hooked up to the time gate node in order to be able to change the toggle time while the game is running. To do that, all we need to do is select the float variable and first turn it into a named variable. Let's call this one flicker time. Now that it's a name variable, all we need to do is click the Expose to Unity checkbox, save the graph, wait for Unity to recompile the scripts, and now we'll be able to have access to this variable from Unity. Now this graph is assigned to the Uscript master game object, so if I select that game object and go down to the light control graph component, you'll see we have an Expose Variable section. If I open that up, you'll see we now have flicker time and the value there. So what this means is when we play the game, we should be able to come here and change this value on the fly. The next thing we should do is fix the GUI text that should print the current state of the light. The problem we have is that the logic for printing the text to the screen is in another Uscript graph called GUI graph. Let's check that out now. So as you can see, this is a simple graph that on update, we concatenate a string and a boolean together and then print that to the screen, which is why currently light state always says false when we run the game. Now what we want to do is hook this up to the other boolean and the other graph that we had set up. So let's go back to that one and we have this light state boolean. So it's already named, but we're not doing anything with it. Now in order to access it in another graph, we can expose this, clicking expose to Unity, save the graph, and then load up GUI graph again. And now we are ready to replace this boolean variable. So select it and delete it. So in order to access expose variables between graphs, uh, they show up as reflected properties. So all we need to do is go up to the reflected section of the toolbox, properties, we find the graph that had the reflected variable, in this case light control graph, and we just go down until we find light state. Of course with any property we need to give it a game object for the instance. Uh, we know this is assigned to the Uscript master game object, so we'll just choose that. And then we just hook this up where we had the other Boolean variable before. So if we save this, and then hit play, the text should be updating to represent the current state of light state from the other graph. So as you can see, it now changes from true to false as it should. Now the last thing I want to show you is how you can use expose variables in order to define assets in the editor so you don't need to have them in a resources folder or use a load assets node. Let's say we wanted to have a sound play each time the light turns on and off. So if we go to my project folder, you'll see under audio, we have a sound. Now usually what we do is go into Uscript, let's load up our other graph, and we might do something like this to load the audio. Go to actions, Assets, load audio clip, maybe do this when the graph starts,
browse to the file. And of course, we don't even have one in there because we don't have it in a resources folder. So what we would have to do is come in here, create a resources folder, drag the audio into it, and then select it. You could then add a play sound node. And maybe hook it up after here. Tell it to use the audio clip we loaded. And we'll have this play off the main camera. Now by exposing variables, we can skip quite a bit of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete all of this. Go back into our project. Get rid of this resources folder, so it's like we had before. And now we're going to use an expose variable to do this in a much simpler way. So let's create a new audio clip variable. Let's give this a name. We'll call it light toggle sound. And we'll expose this to Unity. Save the graph. And all we need to do is go and find it in the graph. As you can see, it's now here, light toggle sound, with nothing assigned to it. And all we need to do is go back into our audio folder and drag and drop it on here. Now this will also work now, because we're telling Unity in the inspector that we plan to use this asset when the game runs. So it knows to package it up for us. So we can skip the resources folder and the load assets uh, node and all that other stuff you used to have to do. Now let's hit play. And as you can see, we now have a sound playing. And because this is now accessed here, we can change this at runtime. So maybe we come up here and we turn it off. And it'll stop, reselect it, as you can see you can use expose variables in different and powerful ways. In this video we showed you how to use expose variables to edit a value while the game is running through Unity's inspector, access a variable between uscript graphs, and use expose variables to assign assets in the inspector in order to avoid the need for resource folders and load asset nodes. I hope this quick tip was helpful and you discover even more cool ways to use it in your work.